The real question. W and I are 47, married 12 years with two great children 10 and 11. About 11 months ago W said she was not sure we had a future. Two to three weeks later our limited physical life, two times a month, ended, but we still share the same bed. After a few months I asked if she wanted me to move out. She said no. I asked if she wanted me to find another woman. She said go ahead. I said I will not be in a non-physical marriage but indicated I would try to get ours back on track. I insisted we see a MC, and we did in September. MC thought it better to meet with her alone, and she had at least two more MC meeting without me. I was a nice guy and far too beta. Began lifting, lost about 10 pounds, gained muscle, still need to lose 15 more pounds. Reduced beta and turned up the alpha. At times I think I have seen some small improvements in her dealings with me. I broke the ice once night last month, but that night of bonding was not a cure-all and at times she can still be very cold, unfriendly, and almost hostile. Fitness test and this coldness can last a week or two at a time. I tend to ignore or laugh at it, it seems to thaw here and there, but not constantly. I do not think there is or has been a P or EA, but I am not 100% certain. I will move on if this marriage is unfixable. Main questions, is her coldness meaningless? A crap tests, a reaction to the destabilization of the situation. Is it a sign of an E or PA? Has anyone else experienced such a reaction or response to a 180? What I recently came to realize is the W essentially ended it about 10 months ago. Still I will continue the 180 to its ultimate end, and improved me in a mutually fulfilling relationship with the W or the next woman. The more I think of it, the more I realize some of her more inconsistent behavior began about a month or two after I started the map and began to man up. This seems to fit with Sonny Bean's view. I should have mentioned that I had some alpha before the marriage, but foolishly relaxed it after. The connection to decline in intimacy and physical life going from 3 per a week then to 2 week, a couple of years later to once a week then to 2 per month. W is highly accomplished professional, and she's been the primary breadwinner during the marriage. I went through a layoff. Since Feb, I've been working in a new field, but not earning much yet. I mistakenly let her be the leader, captain in most things, except disciplining the kids. She is poor at communications, and for years I allowed her to on occasion speak to me disrespectfully. I did not know these were crap tests. I failed many, about 10 months ago she said she did not know if she wanted to stay married. She thought when the kids get older and are out of the house, there would be little keeping us together. She also admitted resentment about having the stress of being the primary breadwinner. I had just started working and again and I thought advancing new career and earning more would solve most, all of the problem. But since reading your book realized that alone was not enough. During time of layoff, I took courses and training to get me into my new career, I was not just sitting around. I do not think she realized or could explain the real reason for her disinterest. My lack of alpha and deceased rank caused a loss of her attraction in me. While a doubt a PA, or even a EA, is the cause, I cannot rule it out. I have not discovered any proof, but I have not done a lot of investigation for either. I also doubt the bonding we had last month would have occurred if there was still an P or E in play. I think she would have instead not let me touch her as she did for months before that. Update, embarrassed to admit this, she tells me she is going away to a city for New Year's weekend with a girlfriend and her GF's friends. I'll be at home with our two kids. I gave no reaction when she told me. Is there a better way to handle this? Would saying no be the alpha way to handle this? But I cannot physically stop her. There is also a lot of texting going on, but she keeps the phone locked with a password and I have not yet learned it. Only other solid fact, W has been to the MC another five times since our first joint meeting with the MC. I am a little surprised by this. Would arranging another joint meeting with the MC be a mistake? There is no E or PA, but she just left for the trip, and we are headed for divorce. The best and most open conversation we've had in years came out of me confronting her. I was willing to speak to her because I am satisfied that there is not an E or PA. This explains why she allowed us to sleep together last month. I learned some of her coldness since then was her stress that I would pursue sleeping with her again, which of course I had done. She is not happy about the demise of our marriage, admitted she is poor at communicating, and said the MC has been trying to help her improve her communication skills and decide what to do. I also realized she hates being vulnerable. Her parents had a dysfunctional relationship and have been divorced for about 18 years. She said she does not want to turn out like them, which is very bitter with each other. While we met the MC the first time and sept together, the MC now tells me she is now just W's therapist, a fact W was supposed to inform me of. So, this means W and I have not really tried any marriage counseling. And we have not done well with just communication with each other because I have not previously been able to get her talking. With no E or P in play, I am certain we could have saved the marriage and had a great life together, but her actions show she does not want to try. I told her I'm going to sleep in another room and we need to plan on how to inform the kids. She agreed. I also said while I am asking for the divorce, it is not my first choice and ultimately, I want the kids to know I did not want to end the marriage. She knows I would like her to commit to a meaningful MC which she said she would think about and discuss with her therapist and with her friend this weekend.
Strangely, she said she had not thought about whether she wants me to start seeing other people. Even with no E or PA, I still said I wanted to get a divorce to exercise some control, and also as a wake-up call for her. I do not think this was the wrong approach, but I am not certain. She is texting work, family, friends, our daughter. I have seen some, but not all. I have snooped extensively and done other things I will not detail. Her phone is locked because of her work and legal requirement for confidentiality, and she has an iPhone loaded with info and other things. It also has effective easy-to-use security. I am not trying to convince myself. As I explained above, I know she is capable, essentially a matter of time. I repeated it in my post to explain why I continue to speak with her with her and discuss MC. I also hope for advice that assumes that EA, P is not the issue. Update. Feel free to pile on with I told you so. Learned three days ago she's at least had an EA going on. In early Jan I followed the advice above to see if she was willing to work to save marriage. It became clear over time she was not. As of mid-Jan, she was not moving in the right direction, and I told her she was not welcome in the marital bedroom and needed to move the guest room. She did. Thank God for the great advice here I have the good bed and master bedroom. I then said I wanted the name of the div mediator she had gotten from someone, and I pushed the 180. A week went by and she did not give me the name. I asked again for the name so I could make an appointment. She said she was not sure she wanted to see a divorce mediator. I said fine then we see an MC. She had been reluctant before this. We saw MC three times, but wife offered little in these meetings but again said her lack of feelings were not mostly due to my low income. But no doubt this is the reason. For a brief time before I was laid off in a prior career, I was earning some good money and she was happier and more affectionate. She will not admit this, but that's the reality which I have accepted. I confronted the OM Wednesday when I saw him talking to her. I told him to stop talking to my wife, told him to not to speak with my kids, not to come to my house. He did not back down, he was trying to show Alpha, but eventually walked away his wife was watching. That day I got the name of the divorce mediator and book an appointment for wed. M. EOM is a married professional colleague of hers and someone who dated her once or twice when they were in grad school. He earns 200 plus and whines because he does not earn more. This and she actually suggested I should apologize to him for the confrontation. I left. She then admitted she has done nothing to shut down this guy's flirting, interest. I plan to tell the OM wife not sure how to do this yet, and I do not have any hard proof texts or email. We are planning to tell the kids tomorrow, not looking forward to it. I found out about the EA by seeing him speaking with her several times, the fact that he has come to my house when I was not there. She admitted he's been flirting with her and rather than shut him down, she continued to doing things like borrow a movie from him when she knew I would not approve. I had asked her where she got the video and she lied about it saying it was a co-worker. He works at a diff office in town not at her office, so that was a deceptive lie. Not sure how to tell his wife yet. I could leave a note for her at her office. I do not have her cell or email. Did not have good proof till today. Found two emails from OM confirming hotel reservations. Printed them and went to wife of OM. Learned the piece of crap divorced his wife over a year ago when she got breast cancer. But he still lives in the same house with her and their high school aged kids. He's been a bad father and cheated on her with his secretary 10 years back. Learned when in grad school Om was married and my wife slept with him while he was married. His family made him end the affair back then. She had told me they only dated back in grad school. No other family to expose him to. My W is away with daughter at Girl Scout overnight. I have been pushing for mediated divorce since I confronted him in March. See above. We met with Div Mediator once and she has postponed follow-up meetings the divorce mediator. In better shape than I have been in 25 years. Working to land new job. Been good father and added more alpha. Have not pursued bonding with her since March. Joined and been looking at pages and dating sites and she knows, but I have not contacted anyone or dated anyone else. She has been a little nice to me in the last two months. We did not yet tell the kids we are getting divorced. I can disclose via phone to her mother, father, bother, sister and perhaps a few friends. I think her bother will tell her to save the marriage, but I think the rest of her family may well tell her to dump me. She's been good covering her tracks till now. I doubt she will make another mistake to allow me to gain more evidence. No fault divorce here in CT, so I doubt her conduct will considered very much. My daughter is 12 and my son is 10 how much can I tell them? I really want to confront her in the most effective way. I have had no text, call, or any contact with her since finding the emails from the OM today. The two hotel reservations are for June and July. If she was there with him tonight, I probably would go knocking, but tonight she's away with our daughter on Girl Scout overnight. The piece of crap earns a lot of money, but hid it overseas from his ex-wife. He lives at the house with his ex-wife to avoid paying child support. He is also avoiding a paying half of his kid's college. I do not know if she knows about OM leaving his W when she got breast cancer. She may know and not care. His wife did not want to fight him in the divorce because the stress would have hurt her chances of a recovery from the surgery and cancer. He wanted her to go back to work shortly after her surgery. What a piece of crap. I learned of the hotel plans because she left her new computer unlocked today. 
I found a few other emails to friends that suggest there was no affair, but she's unhappy with being the primary breadwinner. They also state her family is pushing her to divorce because of how hard she has to work. My comment, her family is all messed up from their parents' divorce so it does not surprise they would tell her to dump you. They obviously have no value on family. Your wife works a lot. Wow, a lot of people do not even have jobs right now. If an OM was ever in my face, he would be flat on his face in 10 seconds. You should pack her crap up and dump it on his lawn with a copy of the hotel reservations. Your wife is so, so selfish. Ask her what kind of value she is showing your daughter by the life she is leading with OM. Time to step it up Alpha Man. The fact that she told defended OM in front of you, it means she doesn't respect your marriage anymore. Story 2. The Long Overdue. Cliff notes of my story, wife filed for divorce in Jan and moved out in May. Walk away wife. No affairs or anything, just two people who grew apart. Have eight-year-old son. At first, I tried to plead with her like most do and realized I only made things worse. Let her go and only talked when it involved son. Past Monday she wants to come over and help son with homework. I made dinner. She started putting up laundry and cleaning. Thought that was strange. Said she would come over wed. To hang out. We talked for hours. Only difference this time was I did not bring up any issue from the past. She did but that was fine. I let her talk. She said she couldn't come home because it was too late and she thinks things will go back to how they were before. Me not being tentative etc. I said, I am asking you to find it in your heart to forgive me. Normally I just told her to forgive me or that she should forgive me etc. This time I asked her to. I told her how I felt about her and said I was sorry for how I treated her and I took her for granted. Normally I would defend myself with any issue that was brought up. She said she needed time to digest everything. I told her that is fine as I did not want an answer of some sort anyways. About 30 minutes after she left, I get a text that says, can we start by being friends? Of course, I replied back sure, I would like that. I'm hoping that is a sign that there may be a small chance. I am not basing my happiness on any certain outcome. I'm going to be happy either way. I know I can't push now and need to still back off and give her space. Or she could have just said that to appease me. I hope not as we have been getting along good. We hugged and cried off and on all night it seems. Thoughts? We are currently separated. We have 50-50 custody that we worked out together. She is 37 years old. Her leaving wasn't a spur of the moment thing. We probably never had a good relationship. Just basic communication issues over the years that pushed us apart. She has always said she was not coming back as she knows I won't stay this way. So, I guess her saying can we start as friends might be better than nothing or better than what I heard in the past. It's over, I'm not coming back etc. Kind of bothers me as she is part of the problem too but I bite my tongue and press on. So, I know what I did wrong and what I need to do, just might be too late. She also knows what she did wrong too, she just doesn't need me bringing it up. I invited her to dinner and to do homework with our son. She accepted and said she was not going to spend the night. Of course, I said that was fine. Just going to be her friend right now and not of any relationship talk etc. We have a mediation next month so eventually I will have to ask her if we can. Put the brakes on that and see what happens. But not now. I need to show her that I can be her friend. Regardless, all this started after I asked her to come over so we can talk. I had no idea what I was going to even talk about. If she reached out to me and started being nice all of a sudden, I may be more inclined to think it's a tactic. But I won't assume anything at this point. She has too much resentment. She cuts me off all the time when we talk. Total lack of respect. I would never take her back just because. There would have to be serious changes on both sides. Personally, I don't care to share with her what I want or expect in mediation. We tried working it out on our own and we couldn't agree on everything. I feel it's like showing the other team your playbook in the Super Bowl. Yes, I will be kind and considerate to her, but I'm not going to do anything to help her case. She asked if she could take son to school this morning. I said sure. When she gets here, she sees a dissertation school paper that I am helping someone fix some issues with. It's a Word document, and it's a female's, just a friend's wife. She a jealous wanting to know whose it is etc. I told her it's none of her business. She is visibly shaken, but I just don't get why. She left. She said she hopes I find someone that will make me happy yet gets jealous all the time. And she has never acted jealous before. My wife walked in May. Our marriage was not good. I wasn't happy either. What bothers me is when I start thinking about it all I think more about what I wanted the marriage to be or what it could have been. And then I start thinking I wish we were still together. So, I don't really want her back, just the idea of a happy marriage. Anyone else think like this when reminiscing? Early on I would invite my wife, not divorced yet, over for dinner or to help with homework for our son. My intentions were to get back together. One night after son went to bed, we started talking about divorce issues. Only I remained calm. We were sipping on beer the whole night and we started talking about child support. She lost her cool. Ended up waking our child three times. Plus acting like an ass in the garage and driveway at midnight. As she said some mean things about what type of man would take child support from a woman. And I am not a man. And I am weak if I took support. I remained calm and I ever lost my cool. 
I tried to get her to come inside and go to the bed and I would sleep on the couch. She drank too much to drive. Ended up her friend came and got her. I told her she could not come here anymore since she can't keep her cool. Several weeks later she called because she wanted her birth certificate. Son was with her so I told her to come by after he went to bed, she is staying at her parents. She calls at 10 p.m. to say she can't come and will stop by in the morning. I go to bed. 30 minutes later she calls and says she is on the way. I tell her not to come as I am in bed and just to come in the morning. She says she is coming anyway and I can't stop her. Her name is on the house still but she moved out. I know she legally has a right but now she is being disrespectful to me. She gets here and opens the door with her key and I don't let her in. She then threatens to call my parents. I guess they will put me in timeout. She ends up calling my parents. That didn't work so she calls the cops. She said it was accident. Yeah right. And hangs up. They call back and she gives them our address. She does not recall giving them the address. Yeah right. And then she leaves. Two cop cars show up and I explain what happened and they suggested I go to the courthouse and get something to keep her away from the house. I forgot the name of the form but I went to the courthouse and they said that form is a part of a restraining order. So, I end up not doing it as that was too extreme as I wanted her to stay away from the house and that is it. Several weeks pass and I extend the branch again and tell her she can stop by and do homework with our son. Now she says she doesn't feel safe here and doesn't trust me as I threaten to put a restraining order on her. She says she will take our son to her parents and do his homework and I say no. If she wants to do it when he is with me then she can do it here. Now she is mad as I am keeping our son from her. And everything has to be done my way. Am I being a mean? I do not want her to have her cake and eat it too. She wants a divorce but wants to come here when she pleases. I want her to know what it's going to be like after the divorce is final. Is it so mean? Like I told her, her name may be in the house but she isn't paying for it. She is with her parents living like a teenager living it up doing fun stuff every day with our son. And I mean every day. An Orlando mom. While I can't afford to do that stuff as I have the house and I'm not a real man if I take child support from a woman. Sell my car and sell the house and get another job is all I hear. Doesn't matter she went through six years of school while we were married while I handled all the work inside and out of this house. I'm just lazy she says. Few months later, we are separated. She tells me she is not coming back. I believe her but still have hope and refuse to give up that hope. I have dated a few women while separated but recently stopped because I am not ready to move on. There are no affairs, just two people living as roommates for years who grew apart. Recently she has at least started owning up to her part. Usually, it's been I didn't do this or I did this etc. a blame game. I have done the 180 and she would ask lots of questions about females I was seeing. Seemed like she was jealous but she did say she was hoping it would work out between me and any of the girls I was seeing. Not sure I buy that, I think that would make this easier on her guilt if I found someone. Regardless, 180 or not I refuse to throw in the towel and give up hope. That might make me a chump, but I'm going down fighting. And I don't mean begging and pleading like I, Font have a pair of balls, but as far as hope goes, I will not quit. I can't seem to get past the anger. The biggest obstacle is dealing with all the things she says about me to others. Even while married. Gossip gossip. Hey, does this, doesn't do this etc. I want to defend myself from the lies. I know I can't control what she says or does and I can't control what other people think. I just can't get past it. I have to figure out how to not let it bother me and just be myself. Frustrating though when you know it's not the truth. Feel like I'm in high school with all the gossip. Need to set some boundaries and rules to follow. I can't be friends with someone who quit on their marriage. I tried. I think she likes the idea of us being friends to help her guilt. Of course, she is not happy now as I tried telling her divorce doesn't make you happy. You trade in one set of problems for another. Seems much easier to make your marriage what you want rather than run away. A few months later, we are still legally married, and she has BF who she just took our child to spend the weekend with. It's not the first time. He saw them hugging and is upset. We have him 50-50 now but when he is with her there is no stability. She's living with her parents and she is taking him different places every weekend. That's not good to me. He should have a stable normal routine. Am I crazy? Does this affect her in a bad way as far as divorce goes? Lawyer, I have one. I spoke to him. I'm torn on what to do. I raised my kid alone I feel as my wife was in school or having fun. I want him to have a stable home environment. She keeps showing me he is not getting that. I'm the responsible parent. Sometimes I wish I could be the irresponsible one for just a few weeks. We have been separated for a year. I'm in a bad place mentally now. Have not eaten in days. Stressed. Worried. Sad. Some people say to snap out of it. Wish it were that easy. My wife and I are separated. She came over to pick up our son as we have been doing 50 over 50 custody since the separation a year ago. We were talking about finances and to make a long story short she had tried to take some mail off the counter. She does not live here. That had both our names on it. We got into a tug of war match. I would say we both acted like two year old kids and made the situation much worse. We were in the garage struggling over this mail and we both fell. While on the ground we were still tugging at this mail. So stupid so stupid so stupid. I'm so pissed I let a situation get the best of me. 
Her head hit the floor at some point and so did mine. She had a huge whelp on her dead. I had one too but didn't notice right away but we calmed down and talked. She stayed here for an hour after this happened. We went over our child's homework and things were calm as they could be considering. Her friend came over to look at her head. Her and her friend came inside and I let her friend use the bathroom and my wife and I gathered my child's school stuff. I walked my child to the car and put him in and kissed him by. The wife and friend were still in the house so I went back in to see what they were doing and her friend was texting her something and I got a bad feeling. So, they left and went back to my wife's parents, where she is staying, and next thing I know the police are in the driveway asking me questions. I told them my story and she told them I intentionally bashed her head on the ground. So of course, I get arrested. I asked the officer to take a picture of the lump on my head and he wouldn't. He did mention it in the police report. I have never been in trouble in my life except for some speeding tickets. Not even when I was in school so I was traumatized by the whole ordeal. I could not believe what was happening. I spent the night behind bars and had to wait till 4 p.m. to see the judge so I could get out. I was released but cannot contact her or I go back to jail. I talked to her father the night I got back. He told me she had filed a restraining order with the court and I was going to be served today. That didn't happen so far. Of course, he is pissed at me but we did have a good conversation and he asked me not to call him back which I have obliged. The restraint order he was reading me says I can't contact her or my child. That is the hard part. I have not been served so the restraining order is not official until I get it. But my bond has restrictions so I think it's best to let things settle down. I am so worried about my son. He is a dad's boy and is with me so much. I have always been number one to him. And what makes me mad is this is only hurting him if he doesn't see me. Obviously, my wife is using this as a power play in the divorce and custody. I told her dad that I wanted to sign the divorce papers and be done with this. But now wife is pissed and saying no to that. I'm hoping once the dust settles, she will come to her senses and do what is best for our child. She really wants this divorce over with. I was the one who hung on to something that was not there. She had papers drawn up once and I didn't want to sign them because I was not happy with some of the things. In hindsight I should've. Of course, now I want to be done. I can't fight this anymore. I have no fight in me. The restraining order that I have not received had an ox second court date for a hearing. I told my lawyer about it to get prepared. But I have to find some way to make it through the next two weeks alone without my child who I have only been a few days at most without his whole life. I just sit here and mope. Can't sleep. Can't eat. I know what people say to do. Eat, get sleep, stay busy and try not to think about it. It's so easy to say that when it's not you in the situation. The law does favor the woman. I gathered that right away. I was guilty before they even talked to me. I feel so horrible for not defusing the situation. But I can't do anything about that now. Wife lessons. Too bad the kids are the one who suffer the most in all of this. I worry about my child. I know he is in good hands. And I know he knows what happened and where I went that night. Just wish I could tell him I'm okay. I have always been number one to him and did most of the mommy stuff since he was born. Wife was working all the time. We have always agreed on 50-50 custody. She is with him more now than when we were married. My parents saw my son yesterday and my dad said he looked happy and was acting fine. Made me feel a little better. My in-laws and three times took my son to see my mom as she is about to pass. I have got way too much on my plate right now. Can't eat, can't sleep. Yeah, after this mess is over, she won't step foot in this home or any home I am living in. I still have not been served restraining order papers. I told my lawyer. This mail had her name on it and mine but it's my house. Mine did the same crap about claiming it was her house. I ended up changing the locks. One day I called into work sick and was home. She came by but didn't know I was there. She tried to get into the back door with a credit card. Then the front door. Then the back door again. Well, I was recording the whole incident. When she left, I sent her a text saying, the neighbors said you were just at the house. She denied it over and over. Then I sent her a screenshot of the video. Anyways I have the videos and so does my lawyer. I'm thinking it may help me with at least showing a history of her behavior. Also, one time before this incident she asked if she could come over and look for her birth certificate. This was before the locks were changed. I said she could after our son went to bed at 9. Well at 10 I call her and she says she can't come by and I said just stop by in the morning. An hour later she calls and says she is coming. I said no as I was in bed. She said I'm coming anyways, it's my house still. I get out of bed to let the dog out and open the door and she is walking through the backyard. I shut the door and locked it. She had a key so I had to put my foot on door to keep her from coming in. She then went to the front door. Same thing. Then she says she is going to call my parents. Holds phone up so I can see their number. I tell her to go ahead. What are my parents going to do? Put me in timeout. Then holds phone up with cops on screen. Well, she was trying to scare me but she called by accident and hung up. They called back and she gave them the address and got in her car and left. Police show up and I tell them what happened. Since we were married and her name was on the house, they couldn't do anything. They said she had a right to come there but something within reason. I wonder if the police had to write a report for that. Anyways, I changed the locks the next day. The restraining order was dismissed. 
The judge ordered my lawyer to contact her lawyer and get a parenting plan drawn up due to the fact that I can't. No contact her for my bond. She showed up with no lawyer. Strange. So, my lawyer got to cross-examine her after she told the judge what happened. She stated I was unstable and my child needs to be with her. Ugh. All that I am going through, I have handled as best as a person possibly could. This is nothing more than a power play for divorce. Glad the judge saw through that and dismissed the order. Our agreement was she would pay his tuition instead of child support, and she would not take half my retirement. I was fine with that. But at this point I am done trying to negotiate. I always said from day one that we put our numbers in the CS worksheet and be done with it. Originally, she was hell-bent on not paying a man child support, as she put it. And a real man would not take money from a woman. Oh, and I would be teaching my son to take money from a woman. By the way, she just does the opposite of me. She wanted me to sign the papers for a long time. I finally agree and now she says her demands have changed based on the battery charge and the fact I don't pay her money owed fast enough. I kept our house. Her name is still on it. She lives with parents and already took all the stuff out she wanted. She keeps talking about equity in the house. Since I have paid almost 20000 in house payments alone since she moved out, wouldn't that factor into her equity? She pays rent there. And utilities. Not sure how much. Her income while married was around 100000 a year. All that school she went through while we were married. I know lately she has been working more too. My income has increased to 80. So, our incomes are closer now than before. Of course, I increased mine to help myself and she decreased hers. And we have been doing 50-50 custody as far as sleepovers go. My comment, keeping the house is the best thing you can get out of all of this. Clean up your mess and make notes on what you do moving forward.